Hey guys, um, so about a week ago, I had a chance to interview Steve Kaufman. He is a polyglot from Canada who speaks 20 languages and he's also the founder of Link. So um, we had quite a long conversation, about like 40 minutes, and I took a clip where I told him about this widespread culture of English in Indonesia and I asked him what he thinks about it and how you Indonesians who are also dealing with this English thing in Indonesia can deal with this. So without further ado, let's get started to the video. Actually, um, one other question where it's actually quite specific to Indonesian. Yeah. So here in Indonesia, um, well, in Indonesia, there's a this culture of um, English shaming. So it's called so English. English, English means um, English, and so means kind of like a wannabe, right. you know. So whenever somebody tries to speak English, and you know, for the intention of practicing, let's say in front of people. Let's say mm -hmm. the envir they they are some a lot of people are unfortunate enough to be in an environment where it's quite toxic where they shame them for speaking English. You know how how do you deal with this kind of situation? They, they shame them for speaking English because they think they should speak yeah. Indonesian, or because they want to point out that they don't speak. Um, English? both, both. Especially if, let's say, the, the person who tries to speak in English has an accent or does not speak English well grammar. Okay, well. Yeah, I mean, I have a rule, like, I don't judge other people, and I don't correct other people. I don't think we should ever comment on other people's uh -huh. use of a, you know, a second, third language. No unsolicited uh -huh. comments, period. So-and-so doesn't speak French uh -huh. very well, or uh -huh. he, you know, never, never, never. We learn languages for ourselves. It's not a performance sport. We learn it for ourselves. So if a person wants to speak English mm -hmm. to practice, that's it. That's fine. And they are not, some might be mm -hmm. better readers. Some might be, have better pronunciation. We should not mm -hmm. do that. Uh, now, people are going to do that. What can you do? I think if, if your motive is, again, if, if you're with people and none of them want to speak English, then mm -hmm. you're not going to mm -hmm. speak English. So, but let's say you're with a group of, you're an Indonesian, you're with a bunch of Indone Indonesians, we want to all uh -huh. practice our English. Well, everyone uh -huh, practices uh -huh. their English. Some are better, some are not as good. So, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. you know, I guess it depends on, on who you're with. But I can see that in the sense that speaking English is seen as something pretentious, kind of more international, more uh -huh. sophisticated, sophisticated. Right, right, right. right. Exactly. That, that, that kind of attitude. <laughs> yeah, I can, I, uh -huh, I can uh -huh. see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what can you do? That's uh -huh. human nature, you know. That's that's. I, I think if a person wants to learn the language, they uh -huh. just ignore that. Uh, I, you know, I would personally, um, if I'm learning a language, let's say I'm learning Arabic, I'm not going to spend a lot of time speaking Arabic with other non-Arabic right, speakers. Right. Okay. I would rather be listening to okay. a native speaker podcast or something like that. I don't spend a lot. Of, but if I run into someone who speaks Arabic, we might just banter back and forth and he might think my Arabic, Arabic is lousy and I think his uh -huh, Arabic uh -huh. is good or not good. It's not, to me, it's, it's not that important. It's not that important. And, and English for Indonesian is primarily to be used with non-native speakers uh -huh, of Indonesian, uh -huh. right? That's why, you, that's why you learn English is to access uh -huh. the language. So either you're going to watch movies or read books uh, or you run into someone who doesn't speak Indonesian. So now you have to speak to them in English. So that interaction with other Indonesians is really not that okay. important. Okay. Right. That's not okay. why you learn English. And and what about what if they can't find native speakers to 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 talk to or like foreigners to speak to? Well, there's nothing wrong with pra if, as long as everyone is of the uh -huh, same uh -huh. spirit. You know, we're going to practice our English together uh -huh. for fun. We're not going to judge each other. Okay. Then do it. But it's not something that I do a lot of. I have to tell you, it's not something. If, if that if that's uh -huh. going to be an hour. That hour, I would spend it listening okay. to a okay. podcast and working on link, saving words and phrases. I wouldn't spend a lot of time speaking with other non native right. speakers. It's not something that I do. But it's a problem, obviously. You're in Indonesia. You know, the way things are, I guess you could speak, you know, you have these online tutors, but they're true. expensive. Now, people from the Philippines are not as expensive, and a lot of people in the Philippines speak right, English true. very, very well. So you can find a, a tutor uh -huh. in the Philippines. Uh, otherwise, the tutor for English, if it's an American or European, you know, English, Australian, it's going to be right. $20 an mm -hmm. hour or so. But maybe you can find the Filipinos at $5 mm -hmm. an hour. And uh, But but once a week is enough, uh, uh, you know, once a week. And then 
then maybe you find the time to get over to Singapore. <laughs> or Bali even. <laughs> Right. Or Bali. Right. Oh yeah, Bali. But we were in my wife and I were in Bali. Wow, in that's a long time ago. Long before the mass. It was it was so nice. We rented a motorcycle, we drove. It probably was a paradise back then. <laughs> it was um, ah, wow. it was a paradise. It was absolutely a paradise. Friendly people, good food, music uh -huh, in every uh -huh. village. You come into the village and then got the I still remember Oh yes, oh my gosh. Special Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Oh, it was and then festivals uh -huh, everywhere uh -huh. and yeah, it was amazing. Now, unfortunately, I, I gather it's been largely spoiled because so many. Yeah, a lot spoiled. of um, it's it's definitely been spoiled. Okay. The um, authenticity is definitely diminished. Yeah. But yeah. Um, see, I actually always um, um tell my audience to if they if they find themselves in this kind of like toxic environment and they don't have people to speak to, I always advise them to speak to themselves because that's personally what I do when I speak sure. in Spanish or Dutch or something like that, you know, so sure. that works as well, right? Speak to yourselves and emphasize, emphasize certain uh -huh, useful uh -huh. phrases, like, uh, you know, I think I always say phrases because you need the phrases so you can repeat these phrases to yourself. I mean, it's hard to have a full uh -huh. conversation with yourself, but you can just go around saying right, different right. phrases, phrases that, that you then have ready to use uh -huh. in a conversation. All of these things work well. If uh -huh. you can speak to yourself, that's fine okay. too. All right, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, it's so nice to actually kind of validate my ideas and actually talk to you here this way. Because also a lot of um, when I was research researching for my course, I think it took me like two, three months to actually look at different um, 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 resources online. So I watch a lot of videos from Luca, mm -hmm. from Lydia, from you, from Benny, and I see like the common denominators, right. you know, like what are the things that are saying the mm -hmm. uh, same way, uh, um, the ideas that are the mm -hmm. same. So um, that all of those, right. I also incorporate my own experience from learning languages, and that's how I made my course. And right. and, and it's really nice to know that I'm actually speak. It's kind of like I don't know, kind of like speaking to my own idol. Let's say you know someone that I look up to. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's uh -huh. also the way how you when, when you spoke with uh, Stephen Crasher, for instance. You know, like I saw the yeah. So I hope you guys like the video. I will see you guys again next week with another video. Until then, you have a good day and bye bye.